It's 2007. My son is now ready to go to school. So those words that were ringing in my head before I even came to the United Kingdom, that education is free, education is free, started ringing in my head. But not so fast because I knew there was something wrong, but I could not pinpoint what it was. So as you know, I'm busy. I'm worried about my shifts. I'm going to work. My wife decided to do some digging. And this is where she realized that there were some performance tables called league tables that show you how schools are performing in your local area. So let me just show you how this works. I'm over here on this government website. So as you can see here, it says uh, compare the performance of schools and colleges in England. So if you click on start now, this is where now you get to choose what area you're from. So I'm just going to come over here to location and I'm just going to add in my area. So when I first came, I was living in Luton. So let's just use that as an example. Okay, so we're going to choose Berry Park. Now, for those of you that have been in Luton, you obviously remember this part, uh, Berry Park. Anyway, I'm going to hit search now. So what I'm going to do now is look for primary schools. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And as this is updating, you can see here we have Beach Hill Primary School. We have Berry Park Educational. Now, this one here is an independent school, so this will not show any results. So anyway, let's use this as an example. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. Now with this selected, I'm going to also go ahead and choose primary. Now there are also other things that you can look for. Workforce and finance. We can also look at absence and pupil population. So I'm going to click on view. So this will give me an idea of the performance of the school. So if I scroll down here, you're going to notice that pupils achieving a higher standard in reading, writing and maths, 5%. Local authority average 7%, England average percent 8%. So you can see here that not very good, okay? Not very good. Anyway, so later on, I moved to Birmingham. So same thing, if you're looking at this from a poor area or a deprived area, you're not going to get very good results. So here, I looked at an area that I live close to, which is called Harborn. So the school that I got here was Harbon Academy. So as you can see here, this has now increased. The school is 37%. And if we compare to this one here, it's 5%. Okay. This is a slightly much better area. And of course, there's also other stats you can look at here. But generally speaking, this is much better than this one here. So here's the thing. I also want to compare and see what happens if we go into the middle class areas because there is a difference here. Let's go ahead and check this out. So in the middle class area, now in Birmingham, the one I can just quickly think of is Edgebaston. So let's again go to location and we're gonna search for Edgebaston. Okay, so this is the area, I'm gonna select that. Within three miles, I'm gonna hit search. So let's go to primary schools. Now, here's what you're gonna notice. You're going to realize that a lot of these schools are private schools. So you have Priory here, Hallfield, all these are private. Just look at that, independent schools, independent schools. Now there's this one here, We'll take a look at it in a moment. But as you can see here, quite a lot of these are private. So as you can see here, I've chosen a school from a deprived area. And you can see the stats here are not very good. But when I come over here to uh, Harbon Academy, you can see here now this goes up to 94%. And, you know, the stats just look way much better. So here's the thing. Quickly, my wife decided that it was a good idea that we homeschool our children. So at first, I was very, very skeptical about the idea because I didn't think it was a very good move, to be honest, because we had no experience in home education. We had no experience in teaching. And so it was very, it was very, very scary. But anyway, she decided to take this head on. She started doing some research online, realized that this was legal because a, a lot of people used to come to us and say, oh, this is illegal. Why would you do this? Blah, blah, blah. Obviously, they didn't know what they were talking about. So... As time went on, we contacted the, the uh, local authority to tell them that our child was not going to go to school. So they assigned uh, someone to come and do some checkups on us. So fortunately, while the home education stuff was going on, we had uh, books that we uh, going through. We also got some CDs, some help from the local authority. It was really good. But what we wanted now was the best from the kids. So as the kids were growing up, we could see that this one here was more likely to go into academics. This one here was more creative. This one was more mechanical. So we could see this as the, uh, as the kids were growing up. But now, here's the thing. Just when we thought everything was okay and it was cheaper to do homeschooling, turns out 
that it is actually quite expensive because the children have to be also engaged in activities to keep them well balanced. You know, they need to be active out there. So they started doing things like forest school. They were doing competitive sport. At one point, uh, one of my uh, kids was actually in the Great Britain team for gymnastics. My other son was playing tennis competitively that he was in the top 10 in, in the county, actually in tennis at, uh, I think it was the Orange Bowl. So we really had to push them on all angles. And also, we also had to give them this exposure to just life in the UK. So we used to go on a lot of holidays, not just focus on the area that we lived in. So every year would make it a point that we go to holidays so they can see different places and meet different people and so on. So one may think that why go to those lengths of going for home education if the schools are free. Well, yes, the schools are free. You can save a lot of money. But the thing is, these schools, if I've just shown you, if you live in a deprived area, the school's performance is not going to be very good. Now, as parents, I'm pretty sure you can agree with me that we would want the best out of all our children when they go to school. So these schools now, the teachers are always absent. In the schools, sometimes they can sell some substances because the people... Uh, the children that are coming to these schools, they're coming from parents who are, you know, so they may be coming from parents who sell some substances or who have, you know, a different way of life. So guaranteed, that is also going to affect your what? Your child that you want to grow up in a good way. Now, there is also exceptions here. Sometimes one of you could say to me, well, my child went to uh, this school with low performance uh, keys, but today they've made it. That's fine. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about the choices that we made and what could be the outcome if you send your school to these type of, uh, if you send your child to these type of schools. The other issue is, as you know, we, we have different cultures. We come from Zimbabwe and England has its own cultures. So there's certain things they teach in school which may not be things that we agree with. Now, I don't want to go into detail here, but I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. So we didn't want those type of things to be enforced on our children but the most important thing was we wanted to develop the kids to go into things that they enjoyed and things that they liked now let's go back a little bit when we were in school we were forced especially let me talk for myself i was forced to do subjects which i really really didn't like for example history you know that did not even benefit me in any way but i had to do that subject so i didn't want my children to be bombarded with subjects that they don't even use in life. Because I could see now education is taking a different route. Things that worked 50, 80 years ago are not necessarily the same things that are going to work today because things are changing, technology, society, and so on. So we wanted to channel the children into what they enjoy best. So as I mentioned, my firstborn, he was more for, I mean, he's more of a geek. So he went into academics right now. He is studying astrophysics. PhD level. The second born, he he's more creative and he's gone into architecture and he's graduating, I think this year, no, next year. And then there's my daughter. Again, she's very creative. Right now we're deciding, you know, what we need to do going forward because they're all passed, by the way. My other son, he is very good at uh, engineering. He likes fixing cars and all of that. So we are, we are already gearing him to go into practical stuff, you know, uh, apprenticeships and all that kind of stuff because he knows exactly what he wants to do. So now back onto the education system. I was just explaining this that, yes, if you do home education, the children will, will turn out good. Of course, if you do a very good job and we didn't waste time doing things that they didn't like uh, to do and force them, you know, subjects that they didn't like. So now the question is, so is the education good in the UK? Well, the answer to that is, yes, it's good. If you live in a very good area because there's postcodes. Certain schools will have poor performances depending on where you live or where the school is located. Now, if you move to the middle class areas or the nice, nice areas where the rich people live, you'll start to see that the grades improve. But sometimes when you leave Zimbabwe, you come to the UK, you may not be able to afford to live in those places because the rent is high. And majority of people that live in those areas are, you know, middle class, they come from professional backgrounds, you know, they, they're lawyers, doctors, and so on. So if you're more on the working class, then 
it's very hard to cross over into this area for your child to get very good education. So this is the drawback. And these are the sort of things that you think about, that you need to think about. Now, of course, when we are talking in passing, we say, oh, England is amazing because the schools are free. Yes, but the quality is not as good. So you'll find that the performance of your child. In fact, you know what? I've seen a lot of uh, people that talk about you know, their children not doing so well at school. And some of them end up doing dodgy things. You know what I mean? Because they're influenced by the other children in that school that come from those type of backgrounds. You know what I'm talking about. Now, I'm not saying this to look down upon anyone, but this is reality and this is what happens. So as you choose your schools or if you're thinking of leaving Zimbabwe to come to England to, to work and so on. And behind uh, the back of your head, you're thinking of the education being so amazing. It's free, blah, blah, blah. Think again. These are the sort of things that you need to look into. This information that I'm sharing with you is free online. Go ahead, go and look at the league tables and you will have an idea of the performance of your school and see if it's worthwhile for you. Maybe you might be better off the child going to a school in, say, Zimbabwe. Now, let's talk about private schools. Now, the private schools, if you decide to take your child to private school, is going to be very expensive. Uh, last time I inquired, it was about 12000 to 15000 per year. And this was just on the fees, okay? Exclude all the other stuff like uh, trips and uniforms and all that kind of stuff. So we're talking close to, let's say, 20000 a year. In Zimbabwe, the private schools are very good and they are cheaper than that. I'm pretty sure on average, we're talking about 9000 you know, 8000 uh, per, per term. So this is something that you may need to think about if you do have that money. So this also applies to universities. Uh, believe it or not, the universities also have league tables. That is why sometimes uh, as Zimbabweans or Asians, we're obsessed with this idea of my child has graduated or I've graduated. But sometimes we are graduating from useless universities in terms of their recognitions on the league tables. Again, you can compare. Like, for example, I know one that came to mind is Wolverhampton uh, University. On the league tables, it's way down there, right? But people get so excited. I've uh, graduated from Wolverhampton University. People don't even tell you about the league tables. When it now comes to looking for a job, I'm sure you can agree with me that companies are going to prefer certain universities over others. So if you've done a degree in, say, Wolverhampton University, it's not going to be the same as a degree in Cambridge University. So again, you have to think about this before you start choosing your universities. But anyway, that's a topic for another day. And I just want to say to those of you that have gone to Wolverhampton University, it's not a bad thing. I'm just using this as an example. I mean, perhaps maybe some of you are in good jobs. In fact, I have a friend of mine who uh, in the, in the uh, medical industry is doing very well. You know, went to Wolverhampton University. But generally speaking, uh, if it's outside, let's say, those degrees which are sought out by the country, I mean, these other, <laughs> these other degrees are not as good. Let's put it that way. Anyway, I have a community of like-minded, positive people on ruaorganic.com. Go ahead, join that community. Uh, this is a community that uh, its intention is to inspire people, push people to do uh, positive things in retirement, in entrepreneurship, setting up business and so on. So go ahead, join in and uh, let's have a conversation over there. Anyway, guys, before I complete this video, I would like to say all credits goes to my wife. She's the one who did the homeschooling for many, many years with all the children. So their achievements is pretty much what she put in. So I'm not taking any credit here. I mean, I want to say it as it is. I was just focusing on feeding the family while she was focusing on making sure our children um, grow up well-rounded and also as good, smart kids who are not miserable because they're doing jobs that they don't like, but because we've built them. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you again in the next one.